Hi, welcome to Go on the Run. And first of all, apologies for not putting out a video in maybe a month and a half, two months. Um, if you've been watching me for a few years, you know it's how sometimes things just get kind of hectic in my life with work and so on and other things. Work especially has been really crazy. But all right, we're back on track. So um, let's see if we can do this. All right, so today um, I'm going to start a new section and this section is going to be on Docker, like using and installing Docker and then try to get a little bit of what's going on behind the scenes in Docker. So we're going to see a little bit of that in the very next um, episode. Um, we just finished up with security. Now I didn't cover everything that we can possibly cover in security and we're actually going to get back to security a little bit later. After we go through Docker in section 26, we're going to do Kubernetes and then after that we're going to get into microservices and then once we're doing microservices, we're going to see that we want to secure our microservices so then we're going to come back and look at something called JWT and maybe authentication application and so on. So security is in our future but we sort of laid the groundwork with section 24. Now let's talk about Docker. So if you know something about Docker or you're very familiar, please forgive me. Um, I'm going to simplify things. And this is for people who I'm going to assume don't know anything about Docker or they may have heard of it, but haven't used it. And so I'm going to take that approach. As usual with my videos, I try to break them down and simplify things. So um, for the people who know this stuff, just bear with me until we get to a part where, you know, we can actually show what is really going on. And if you know Docker and you want to pitch in, definitely leave comment, constructive criticism, comment, whatever, um, to help out. All right. So with that said, let's jump in. So what is Docker? And I'm going to say that Docker is an application which abstracts the creation of containerized processes. Now, in the next video, next episode, episode two, I'll talk a little bit more about containers and processes. But for now, just really let the very um, layman idea of what some, when somebody said that you contain something, or you might partition it, restrain it, that sort of thing, let that just be the thing that you, that you sort of take away from now. And processes, you know, these are the things that your operating system manages, right? When we say we run an application, we're running a process. It, it's represented or the runtime representation of, of our application is a process. That's what the operating system manages, is our processes. So a container runs one or more processes in isolation. If you have two containers, then the processes within those two containers are isolated because that's what a container do. It's like partition them into the, the processes within container A can I see the process in container B. So why would you use a container? Well, a container gives you some benefits and allow you to enforce limitation on the CPU usage, how much CPU can, a process can use. So if you're worried about maybe someone writing an application that might um, create some crazy for loop that just um, consume a lot of CPU, you can probably put it in a container and restrict how much CPU it can use. Um, of course, network, you know, bandwidth limitation, which um, Ethernet interface it can use and so on, how many bytes it can send. And then of course, also memory. Um, this is the other thing. These are like the three core things in terms of resources that a operating system manages for a computer. Docker allows you to create containerized processes or containers that can um, that ha manages processes. Docker also not only allows you to create these containers, but manage the container, which is stop them, start them, delete them, see what they are, that sort of thing. It also manages something called um, images, which are the templates you use to create containers. You can think of uh, image as the instructions of what go into a container. It sort of describe what is going to be in the container. All right. So I think that's enough for, from my point of view of what I can tell you with Docker in a very layman way. Now, if we were to go to our web browser, however, so let's do that. All right. So here we are at a web browser, but before we continue, if you don't mind doing me a favor, hit the thumbs up button on this video, um, give it a like, leave a comment at the end of the video. Let me know what I'm doing right, what you'd like to see. Um, if you have any suggestions and so on. And certainly if you're watching this video and you haven't subscribed, yeah, please do consider hitting that subscribe button. And of course the notification bell so you can be notified when I post new videos, especially the next videos that's gonna follow this one. All right, so let's get back to this. 
So what does the internet have to say about what Docker is? And so it says Docker is a set of is a set of platform as a service products that uses OS level virtualization to deliver software in a package called containers. Well, we kind of say, said that, but we didn't see exactly how it was doing. So this is saying that oh, it uses OS level virtualization. That's quite a bit. That's why I didn't really want to go with this because if you don't know anything about that sort of stuff, this is all very confusing. Containers are isolated from one another and bundle their own software, libraries, and configuration file. They can communicate with each other through well-defined channels and blah, blah, blah. It goes on. So I think um, our definition still serves us well. We're not too far off the mark. We didn't see exactly how containers work. We didn't go into exactly what's contained and this says within a container and this says, oh, it's libraries and configuration files and so on. But we kind of assume that oh, in order for the container to be able to run a process, it would need all the information to run that process. All right. So like I said, this video is just going to be about very high level what Docker is. I think we covered that. And then now let's go install Docker and play with it just a little bit. And then we'll get more into it in other videos. So in this video, we just want to get set up. So you can click on get started. Um, if you go to docker.com and then you click on get started and you can see here you have Docker Hub, which we're going to see later on. But here, if you click on Docker for desktop, you can download Docker for your desktop. Now we can go look at play with Docker, but we're not going to worry about that right now because ideally what we really want is to have Docker installed and running on your computer. So I'm on a Mac, I'm going to click download Docker for Mac. And so once I do that, you can see it's that downloading this file called docker.dmg. And there it is. It's finished. I'm going to click it to open it to install Docker. And it says basically to install, let me just drag this and drop this over there. Now I already have Docker installed. So I'm going to say replace to replace the version that I have with this version. But if you were doing this for the first time, you're not going to have that problem or that prompt. And so I'll close this. I'll close this too, because I don't really need it. And um, then I'll say Docker to run Docker. And we should see that it is going to start running here. Now on Mac, because of permission and other security concern, um, you're going to get a prompt. And you may have to go into your system preferences to, not may, you will have to go into your system preferences to grant Docker some permission. For Mac users, you should be able to know what I'm talking about. It simply means going here in system preferences, going into security. I don't know which one it is, but it's going to prompt you for something, access to something. But I'm not going to worry about that now. So you will be prompt, prompted for something. Now, now that notice that once I um, start Docker, it's running up here. You, you saw the thing sort of like moving there a little bit, animating. And so now it says Docker is running. Once Docker is running, once you see this green that says Docker is running, now you can come to your command line and you can type the command Docker and you'll see that it would return with this. So let's zoom in a little bit. Let's make this even bigger. Now, when you stop Docker, that command is not available. Not usually. It wouldn't run. As you can see, there are many subcommands that you can use with Docker. And so one of the simplest one is remember we said Docker is this thing that create containers and allow you to manage them and so on. So let's start off with simply Docker PS command. And we can see the PS command here means list containers. So this would be list all the containers I have running. And you can see this is container ID, image that it, the container was created from, command that this container is running or was used to run that container when it was created, the status if it's running, stop, exited, whatever, which ports this is basically if you're running an application within the container that um, uses some ports, it exposes some port, you would see what those port mappings are. And then you could give your container a name. Again, a lot of this seems like just stuff you don't know. So um, that doesn't make any sense right now, but just trust me, I just wanted to go over that. So that's PS, it lists. It is no different than the PS command for people who are on Linux on Mac to list um, the commands that are running, the processes that are running. So PS, process. Um, so there's process list. So Docker PS is the same thing. There's also for Docker PS, there's also a minus A option to show all um, containers that ever run and you know the ones that are stopped. So PS actually show what's running, minus A show 
the ones that were run in the past. And you can see that I ran some containers about five months ago. Um, it was created five months ago, six months ago, and they exited. All right, so let's clean up and let's now run a simple, um, create a simple container by using a run command. So if you do minus minus help, you can see all the parameters uh, arguments you can pass to the run command. And you really don't have to worry with all the options, but really all you need to do is say docker run, tell it the image that you want to use, which is that thing that I said has all the information about what should be in this container. And then you give it any command that you want to pass to that image, um, to the application in that image or the process. And then, of course, arguments for this command. So for us, what we will do is we'll say docker run. And I want to say I want to run a create a container based off of a Ubuntu image. So I'm going to say U-B-U-N-T-U. And then I want to run the bash command within that U the container. So the this Ubuntu here is the name of the image I want to use to create this command this container sorry and then once that container is created i want to run the bash process inside of this container so if i do that you should see it says that oh it's going to pull this down and we'll explain all of this later and um so it run my um my created my container but because I say run bash, it run the command and the command exited and therefore the container also exited. And so I can see this by doing docker ps minus a. And you will see that oh, I have a container here and it was created from Ubuntu and it run the bash command and that was 20 something seconds ago. Now, one of the things I can do is clean up by saying docker rm and I can use this container ID to say I want to remove that container, which means it's no longer in that list. Now, it's not very useful to be able to run a container like I did just now and not be able to like use it. So for example, one of the things I can do is one of the options that we have for the run command is this T for TTY, and there's also a minus I for interactive, which means keep standard in open even if not attached but we want a minus t also to attach to it so i'm going to say i want to run command i want it to be interactive with a tty and i want to still use ubuntu as the image to create this container um, that's run the bash command and so now if you notice i am now root inside of some weird looking host um, because I say create a container off of Ubuntu, I'm essentially, even though I'm on my Mac, I'm essentially inside of a Unix environment. And if I do PS, I'll see commands, the processes that run inside of Linux. If I do something like cat slash etc slash lsb release, we can see it always says it's Ubuntu, Ubuntu 20.04. So just look how easy and quickly I was able to get a Linux environment that I can CD into. And this have all the trappings and everything, all the files for a Linux environment. If I do DF, I can see all these different file system. I can do LS, ETC, and I can see all the files that you would expect to see in a Linux environment. That's because this image, this Ubuntu image that I used to create this container had this file system with all these files and so when Docker created a container, it used all these files and the configuration to create my container. And then when I use bash, well, it's run the bash command inside of this container in the bin directory. Um, notice all these Linux command and bash was one of them. It used bash um, to give me this, uh, to start this process, this bash process. And because I said do it interactively, I am now within that bash command. And again, if we do PS, we can see that we are running that bash um, process as the first process. And that is why, and this is more Linuxy thing, but since it is the first process, when this process exits, the container exits. So we're gonna get back to that again. Don't worry about it. But if you can do what I just did, then you're well on your way. So now we can type exit to get to this container. And if we do Docker, 
we'll see it oh, it's not running that's because when we exit we exit out of this bash and because this is the first process when it ends the container ends and so if we do minus a we'll see it oh, there is our container now another thing we can do is of course i did back, bash um, docker rm and remove this container previously so it was a different container, not the same ID. By the way, if you create a container, it gets a different um, container ID. So I just removed that container. Um, I can rerun the container and I can tell Bash to remove it as soon as I'm finished with it. So I think it's minus, minus RM, or minus, minus RM, uh, minus RM, I can't remember, but I think that's it. And so now if I run a container, uh -huh, so it's minus, minus RM, there we go. And so now if I run the container, notice I am inside a different container. You can see this is the container ID. Yep, there's the container ID and there it is. And that's what I remove. Now we have a different container ID. Here we are. And so, okay, let's do this. I'm gonna split my screen and then I'm gonna do, it, I'm gonna do Docker PS. So you can see that right now I am inside this container and there it is, it's running. Okay, and it gives it this crazy name, but this container is up. 27 seconds and it's running okay so let me do something else i'm going to do a watch here watch minus d and so you can see that when i exit this container that container is going to go away so exit and you can see it automatically get removed and not only that but if i come down here control a and then i do minus a to show me all containers you can see it's not there it's automatically removed because i use the minus r and which says clean it up remove it after i exit the container now um so far all we've done is be able to show that we can create a container and if the container is based on ubuntu well then we have a ubuntu like environment but let's just try to do the same thing and create a centos container so centos and so i don't have centos here. So it's pulling all the images and we're going to talk more about this later, but it's pulling all the information that it needs to create a container. And it did. And as you can see, here I am, um, I have a CentOS, a container based off of CentOS. I'm still running the bash command. And if I do cat slash etc lsb, um, let's see. So clearly CentOS does not have that file, lsb file. So let's see, CD, let's see, let's see. What is in CentOS that would prove that we are running CentOS? Oh, OS that release, cat that OS that release. And so we are running CentOS 8. And if we do hostname CTL and run this command, you can see hostname is not being booted. Ah, okay, so we can't run hostname within here. Okay, but hopefully you're convinced that I'm now in a CentOS um container and you can see all that stuff from here um sent to us eight um so we are successfully able to create a number of containers and again since i run this i run this create this container with minus minus rm if i exit it it's going to be cleaned up automatically and go away now one of the things you can do is you can give your container a name so i can say name and this is my sent os and so this time I remove the minus minus RM, so it's gonna stick around. And so I create the container and there it is. And as you can see, now instead of having some random name, it gets the name that I give it. And of course I can exit. And because I didn't do RM, the container is stopped or exited, but it's still sticking around. And that's because I'm running the Docker PS minus A command. And of course I can remove the doc, that's, um, Docker RM. And then I could remove using the name my sent OS. I don't really, once I have a container name, um, you can use the name or the container ID. Either one works, whatever the name is. And so there we go. And so I remove my container. Later on, we're gonna see how to start and stop containers, or you can reuse the one that you've already created. But I think this is enough for now without making the video too long. I hope you like it. Um, leave me comments, let me know. In the next video, I'll go into a little bit of what are the magic is happening behind the scene. Right now it looks like magic, but once you um, get to see a little bit of what's going on, I think you're gonna appreciate um, this technology. 
okay take care again before i get out of here please hit that thumbs up button for this video leave comments let me know what you like what you didn't like whatever if you have constructive feedback great um if you like everything sure just say say that and subscribe if you haven't subscribed hit the notification bell so you'll be notified take care stay safe and see you soon bye